55 Elijah, Phoenix, Arizona, USA. Good evening, friends. It's a privilege to be in this Shrine Auditorium again, just for the night of the eve of the closing of this marvelous campaign. I believe this campaign ranks next to the best that I've ever had and seen. The first time was when I was, of course, up here when we stayed so long. I don't believe we had any better meeting then than we've had at this time. It's been a very fine meeting, and we are very thankful for it, and we pray that God will richly bless each of you. Now, tomorrow night is a closing night. We got to hurry over to California to the Angelus Temple, and then Saturday morning we got to be at the Christian Businessmen's Full Gospel Fellowship internationally at a broadcast and a speaking. So then we are at the Angelus Temple until Thursday of next week. And then on Friday, we begin at the stock exhibit where we was last year with the full gospel businessmen internationally. We have a lovely big place down there that sits, I think, about 11, 12,000, maybe a little more. And it's a very nice place, plenty of room, acoustics are good, and it's really a nice place. And we are, you are cordially invited to come over anytime and visit us if you're in that part of the country. If you have some loved ones there, we'd be very, very happy for you to write to them and tell them if they're sick, come out. We'll do our best to minister to each, to them in the name of the Lord. Today has been a little better day for me. I had a little more rest. Sunday was pretty hard. And today or yesterday was kind of felt the effects of it, you know. I'm not a little boy no more. After you pass 20, of course, you know. I'm just a little past 20, and so really, I really feel it after that. Well, you know, Brother Bosworth, here some time ago, how many knows Brother Bosworth, Brother F.S. Bosworth, nearly everyone knows him, I suppose, wonderful old veteran of the gospel. And we were down in his country in Florida, and there was, we had our dinner, and we walked out to the seashore, and I was standing out there, 40 years old, my shoulders drooped over. He was standing nearly 80 and his shoulders back like that. I looked at him and I thought, oh my. I said, Brother Bosworth, I said, when was you at your best? Oh, he said, right now. He said, you just misunderstood, Brother Branham. I said, I'm just a kid living in an old house. He said, so I thought, God help me to feel that way if I ever live to see that age. He keep his new, his youth renewed in his mind. When he gets up in the morning, he has to see. He will stand there and keep quoting scriptures. He says, of course, his blood pressure goes low, an old man like that. But he just was a trip with me through Africa, come back, went back himself, and just returned from Japan. He called me up about six months ago, and he said, Billy, he said, how do you like to go to Japan with me? I said, well, when you going next summer? He said, right now. Nope, waiting for him. He took off to Japan come back. He was with me up to Dallas, or not Dallas, but Lubbock, a few weeks ago, just in the best of health at nearly 80 years old. So, if we can feel that way, we ought to be ashamed of ourselves, or not we? That's right. To see as we are, as young as we are, and then an old man, 80 years old, and still preaching the gospel. Well, I tell you, one of these days, he will step his foot over on the other side. Things will be changed then. Think of it. While you're here tonight as a Christian and sinner also, like, I want to give you something to be thinking of while I speak to you just a moment. For instance, tomorrow it's packing up time. we got to leave, maybe tonight. we got to leave this world, go somewhere else. And you know that might be just about so too. I heard of my associates say today that not only in this city, but all the cities around over America, one of my associates said that he seen a car open up and just a teenage girl started to get out and the beer and whiskey cans and things fell out of the car. The kid just left them lay there and went on in to get something and come back. He said, if God doesn't soon send judgment upon America, he will have to resurrect Sodom and Gomorrah and to apologize to them. That's right. Resurrect Sodom and Gomorrah and apologize for sinking them. That's right. If we don't soon send judgment. We're in for it, friends. That's all, sure. But the church is in it for you too. A rupture, amen. That's a wonderful part, the rupture coming for the church. Be a sad day for the unbeliever then, but it'll be a most marvelous time that we've ever seen or thought for those who are ready at that time when Jesus comes. 
what if you are taking a trip into the other world that you don't know where you're just stepping off you're old and shaky you have served the lord for years and years and tomorrow you're going to go back aboard a ship that's going to take you away when you get old and was going to the ship coming over here at the dock and you went down and got in the ship the old fog gone blood and she started across the sea and as soon as you got across she made trips back and forth for the thousand of years and when you set your foot on that new land somewhere you just discovered a new land and whenever you set your foot down there then every one of those gray hairs went black again all those wrinkles and worn down bodies went back to a young man and a woman again to live forever just as soon as your feet touched that land and that's what happened well that's just exactly what happens that's right when the old ship of zion comes gets its victim taking him away some of these mornings i expect to hear the whistle blow myself in the room when the fogs are gathering this mortal life is spent i hope that everything's all right then i believe that it will be he gave me the promise i believe it with all my heart that i'll step across the other side now not only me but all those they love his appearing they'll be there so keep your thoughts on that sinner friend tonight. And what if come with you and went out here to a shoot somewhere that went down to a dark whirling pit to an eternity that never ceased in the midnight darkness and screams and moans and groans? Maybe tonight you might make a decision to change ships. I hope you do. All without Christ go that way. All with Christ go this way. And just a difference of whether you believe him and accept him or not. So make your choice tonight and let us pray now while we bow our heads our heavenly father we are gathered in this great auditorium here tonight where you've met with us night after night and blessed our hungry souls giving us the bread of life food for our souls salvation for those lord who are in need healing for those who are in needing and supplied those things which we have asked and we are grateful to thee to seeing thee in the power of the resurrection and i pray father that you will be with us tonight, will help us and bless us. Bless his wandering children tonight, Father, wandering about, not knowing just which way to go or what to do, unstable, and never has anchored yet in Christ. Pray tonight that he'll cast the anchor beyond the rock of ages there. When these ships are whirling and tossing, I shall backs upon the sea of life. We know our anchor holds within the veil. God grant it. Get into the world, we pray, Father, and make yourself known to every person here through the teaching of the word. May the Holy Spirit just take the word of God and deliver it to every heart, just as you have need. At the end of the service, may the glory of the Lord be upon the people, for you ask it in Jesus' name, thy son. Amen. Just for a few moments, that we usually try to start the prayer line around 9 o'clock if possible. And now just, this is something new to me to teach to the people. And then, really, this is, I guess, my first meeting in years to ever try to teach the people before having a prayer line and it just done my heart so good to see hands go up accepting the lord jesus and when i go home at night and kind of come out the visions that i just sometimes lay in there after they're all gone to bed i just weep for joy to think god was pleased tonight because i know he was sinners came home that's true then he honors us with his blessings and pours out his spirit heals the sick giving faith what more could we want than that now over in second kings tonight last night speaking on elijah the prophet and tonight we had him last night going up to when elijah rather and Jehoshaphat and them come down to meet him tonight we got him in another scene in the fourth chapter of second kings and just for text i want to read the 24th verse of the fourth chapter of second kings and she then she saddled an ass and said unto her servant to drive, and go forward, slack not thy reading for me, except I bid thee. But the Lord add his blessings to a reading of this verse of scripture. Now our sin begins tonight upon a family in distress, and perhaps this would be a good thing tonight to recognize that there's perhaps many families sitting here tonight in distress. And if we can only find something in the Old Testament here, which was an example of what believers done in that day, when in distress, why perhaps maybe we can take them as an example and find a position then and what to do. In the days of Elijah the prophet, after last night, we seen that he was a type of the church, 
after Elijah being the type of Christ taken away and the double coming up on the prophet, we find that he made his way up to dental country Shunem. And there was a noble woman up there, and she was not an Israelite, she was a Shunammite. And Elijah passing through this country, she took notice to him that he was a holy man, a man of God. What a lesson we could get out of that, that we, our walk and our associations with people, that people recognize that we were children of the king. God help us to be that way. I believe the scripture says that we are written a piece of of all men, and Elisha so conducted himself around in that gentle country there that the Shunammite woman realized that he was truly a servant of God, his character, his conduct, and the thing that God did by him, and she recognized him to be a servant of the Lord. So she wanted to show some kindness to him, and she had him come over for dinner, or what more, give him a little offering, help him pay for something treated him kind, not because she wanted any reward. People who give to people thinking that they'd get a reward for it, well, they don't have any reward. It's those who give freely from the bottom of their heart that says, I just give it freely, not that I expect anything in return. Jesus said that the Gentiles or unbelievers do such as that. They give when they expect to be given back. But we, the children of God, give when we don't one in return. We just give it. And when the woman had no, she proved it a little later. She had no alternative or given to this man the blessings that she was to give to him of giving him food, money, whatever she gave him had a little offering for him when he passed by. She only gave it in respects of God. She said, I know that he's a holy man. I know that he's a man of God. And I, he don't belong to any domination. He doesn't belong to any, my church perhaps, but maybe my pastor wouldn't agree with him. But yet, I believe that he's a holy man of God. I believe he's a sub God servant. So I'll just give him a little offering. So she did that in her kindness. After a while, she began to realize that there was something real good about the man. So she said to her husband, she said, you know, this man that passes by here is a man of God. His God servant, and now we are worth a little money. We've been giving just a little bit as he passed by. Let's show him some kindness. Let's just build a little room out here somewhere. When he passes by, he looks so tired and weary. When he's on his road up to the mountain to pray and fast, for days at a time he goes up there. And let's just make a little place out here that's on our. We've got plenty of ground. So let's build him a little room out here and put a little table in it and a candle and a light stool that when he passes by why he can come in and refresh himself and lay down on the bed and rest a little while and that's thinking a whole lot of summer so they she fixed him this place and the husband perhaps being perhaps a just and good man he said well that would just be fine so they go and build a little place and just give it to the prophet as he passes by. And it came to pass one day when Elisha was coming that way and he thought by and he found his little place, of course, he was very happy to find that the people loved him. Now everybody wants to be loved. I tell you the truth, I do. I want God to love me. I want the people to love me. That's exactly the truth. And if God loves me, then the people will love me. And if I love his people, then he will love me for doing it. God would rather I'd love you than love him. Do you know that? I'd rather you love me, boy, back there. <clears throat> no matter what you say about me, I want you to love my children. And any father would think that. So Father, God thinks the same thing, for he said, in so much as you have done unto the least of these, my little ones, you have did it unto me. So if you want to love God, just start loving all of his children, and God will reward you. If you just love his children, that shows the love of God is in you. Jesus said, this is a way that all the people to know that you are the children of God and pass from death unto life when you have love one for another. And then you'll know it, not because you can have a big church, that's right, not because that you have other all, fine ministers come by, that's good too, but it's because that you have love one for another. Now, when this revival is over, and you go all go to your respective churches, we're not here to proselyte and tell you or leave one church and go to another. You keep your church. Try to bring sinners into that church. 
that when you go back to your respective church, go back with a, such a heart full of love. And that women that you just couldn't stand or that man love him or her anyhow, they'll know you got something out of the meeting then. That's right. If you don't do that, then you haven't got anything yet because you've got to have love one for another. Then the people, the outside world, will know that you have passed from death unto life when you have love one for another. Jesus said, you're the salt of the earth. But if that salt lost his savior, that's his strength. It is henceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and trod under the foot of men. About here last year, I was holding a convention for the four square people in California. And I passed the salt lake deserts. And that's what I seen then. The salt left its favor. Nothing but just to make works out of. But salt is a savior if it contacts. You have a piece of meat here and a barrel of salt here. You've got to get them together too and salt the meat or the meat the salt to preserve the meat. And that's the way it is. We've got to get the believer with an believer. That's right. You have got to get them into the church, into the salty bunch of people. So you know salt also makes a thirst, doesn't it? And if you eat salt, you get thirsty. And God wants his church so salty to the whole world will thirst to be like them. That's right, see, just thirsty, just thirsty. Just think, say, oh, if I could only live the way that woman lived, if she ain't the most sweetest, peaceful person, never out of humor, never is fussy, she's always kind, trying to do something to help somebody else. Why, she's a credit to any man church. Yes, sir. That man used, he's a neighbor, he's a gentleman. He's just full of love of God, you can see more. At all hours of the night, on his knees, somewhere praying, he's always ready to do go do something. He's always talking about the Lord Jesus and his mercy. That's a way to make the world salty, act like that. Now Elijah was that type of person. So then one day, coming by, being tired and weary in his journey, I can see him say, well, looky here, a little sign hanging on the door. This property belongs to the man of God that passes this way. I can hear him say to his servant, why Gehazi, look here. This Shunammite people here has given us this little piece of property here that we can drop in he opens the door for it's his goes in lays down upon the bed stretches himself out said you know she's been awfully kind to us Gehazi she just ministered to us in everything that we have need of go in and talk to her look like he ought to have went in but he said you go in and talk to her and see if she wants to speak to the king or to the chief captain they all like me I'm good friends maybe she'd want a favor or something like that I believe that Elijah was only trying her. So he went and asked her and she said, no, I dwell among the people and I didn't want any reward for this. In other words, I just did it because that I myself love the Lord and I want to do something for him. So the only way I could do it, I seen him to be a real servant of God and a man of God. So I just done this for that purpose. I don't want any reward. And so he goes back and Elisha said, talked about it a little while, and I imagine Gehazi said, Elisha, I'll tell you one thing, said, she hasn't got any children, and her husband's old. Yes, Elisha said, I imagine he turned over on his little bed that he had in there and laid there a few minutes and thought, after a while a vision come before him, and he seen the woman bear a child, said, go get her and bring her out here. So, he went and got the woman and brought her back out to the door. And when she walked to the door, he said, Thus saith the Lord, according to time of life, about this time next year, you're going to embrace her son. She said, Nay, now, said, I, my husband's old. But just the same, Elijah said that. It was in the name of the Lord. So that settled it. When God says anything, that completes it right then. That's all no need of wondering anymore. God has said so. If God said that Christ was returning to the earth, I believe it. That's right. If God said these kinds of times have come and men would be heavy handed lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, I believe it. That's right. Everything that God says, I believe it. He said he was wounded for transgressions. I believe it. He said by stripes we were healed. I believe it. 
so that settles it saying if you believe it then take it act on it and that's the results will come no matter how long it tarries just keep believing it abraham tarried or abraham waited for 25 years before the promise ever come but he was getting stronger all the time praising god baby was going to be born anyhow made arrangements for it everything got ready for the event just as soon as god told him it was going to happen he made everything ready and then waiting 25 years just kept waiting until finally it happened growing strong all the time <laughs> when god speaks it's got to come to pass so elisha told her she was going to have a baby and that's exactly the time that Elisha said it would take place. It took place because he was a prophet. He was under the anointing of the Holy Spirit and he had to curse. It had to come to pass. So the little boy got about 12 years old and Elisha would come by and lay on his bed and go out into Mount Carmel where he had a cave up there. He went to pray in. And one day the little lad was out in the field with his father with the reapers long up in the day around 11 o'clock something like that and i believe the little lad had a sunstroke because he began to holler oh my head my head and that time a day out in the field probably a little bareheaded boy running around out there about 12 years old behind the reapers way down in there were deserts like it is in here perhaps the little fellow had a sunstroke so his father had a young man to pick him and take him back to the house and he sat on his mother's lap until the midday and then he died now seemingly it was all over so the mother picked up the little fellow now notice the first thing she did with that little boy she took him right out of her own house out of elijah's house and laid him on the bed where the trumpet had laid pretty good wisdom i believe took him away shut him from all from the unbelief and put him in the chamber where the prophet had been and close the door let nobody in there go to messing around with him but she put him in the room and closed the door and husband came in of course there's a lot of screaming and crying and going on in the shed all will be well now saddle a mule for me i'm going to the man of god now all hopes ain't gone something in her heart began to tell her that something could be done all the herbs and perhaps the doctor been there done all he could do nothing could be done and she'd be done all of her remedies she knowed and then nothing could be done the little fellow died now she thought or perhaps maybe the rest of them thought that all hopes was gone but she knew that there was still a god that lived and reigned oh my if we only could any get that now something going down in her heart begin to beat i would like to find the man of god i'd like to go to church again usually that's about what hits a person's heart when trouble hits the home i'd like to see the man of god again but her husband said why he hasn't passed by here he goes up at the new moon and up in the sabbath worship he goes up there but it's neither new moon nor sabbath so he won't be there she said all is well why how could she be such a sort as that because something down here in her heart told her get the man of god do you see it now she knew there was a god that ruled the universe she knew that the god who made the sun to shine the way to grow the tree brought life and she knew that god had a representative here on earth and that representative was the prophet and she knew if she could ever get to the prophet not that she i don't think that she had an idea that the sun would be raised but she thought if she got to the prophet that she would be able to understand why god took her child and now people just don't realize what god can do through his servant that's the reason today that people can't get so much done ends because they have lost their faith in the servants of god that's right part of it is a servant's fault he tried to tell you god way back years ago but God is still God here on earth, using his servants just like he always did. He doesn't fail. He's the same God. All ages, in every age, he's had somebody to put his hands on. And he must expect God to do something through his servants. Amen. Oh, she said, all will be well. Let everyone alone. I like that. Something settled down in her heart. And if she ever got Elisha, 
she would find out just exactly why the baby had died because she knew he was God's servant. So they saddled the mule and I like this commission she gave to the servant. She said, you go forward. Don't you stop or slack or anything until I bid you. I think this, the church ought to have a commission like that. Go forward, don't you stop, just keep moving on. When this revival closes, start another one somewhere. Don't wait, don't wait around, just keep moving for God. Just keep moving on, because people are dying every day somewhere. Over maybe 100,000 people die every day in the world. I believe 125,000 it is, and dies every day in the world. And about 100,000 of those died without knowing Christ. We ain't got no time to hang around. We've got to go forward and don't slack a bit. Not this revival. You're having a good time and seeing souls saved. Just keep on moving. Don't slack at all. And the preachers don't wait till all Roberts comes or William Branham or somebody else. Practice divine healing in your church. Let's go forward. People are dying. Let's get them to the man of God, which is Christ. Don't wait for some special event to go now. You're God's servant just as much as anybody else is. Your call, you method is about this Presbyterian. If you've got a commission from God, the general orders is go into all the world and preach a gospel to every creature. Lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. These signs will follow them that believe. If you got a commission from God, you got an ordination from God to do these things. I mean, who has you say? Oh, Jesus can do them. He said, You can do them. In my name, I won't, they shall. Amen. You got the cart before the horse, see, all right, in my name they shall cast out devils, they shall lay their hands on the sick, is that right? They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover, that's a commission, let's take it and go, we are too slack about these things today, we have a little star in the people, and then we settle down like the devil blowing his breeze across us, and we get an old true story magazine somewhere, in the house, instead of picking up the Bible, there's a many Christian in the city tonight that can tell you all about Hollywood, but knows no more about God and call themselves Christians. It's a shame, amen. Prayer meeting, night comes, you stay home, watch television, instead of going out at the prayer meeting, isn't that right? Sure it is. Everything, time to read the papers, time to do this, time to have your society gatherings and things, but no time for God. What we need today is a good old-fashioned St. Paul revival and the Bible, Holy Ghost back in the church again, signs, wonders, and miracles, time for everything but the right thing. That's the reason the world's in the condition today. Haven't got time to take care of the children. Let them run the streets. You women calling yourself real mothers and don't even know where your kid is either half the time. And that's not only in the Methodist and Presbyterian. And that's in the Pentecostal too. That's right. You know that's the truth. Talking about Dribble and delinquency, it's a whole lot of parent delinquency. What the parent needs today is to get some of them old beer cans out of that ice box out there take the cards off the table and put the Bible right there and open it up and call the kids around and have a prayer meeting. That's what we need today, that's right. And some of you up in my country, Kentucky, there are these little old things that see the illiteracy of Kentucky, how ignorant, how dumb they are. I had a minister tell me he didn't want to go down to Kentucky because the people were so stupid in Kentucky, they live down there. Let me tell you something. Some of them, all great-headed mummies up there, could teach you something, that's right. You let your daughter run out all night along nearly with a, some cigarette, old cigarette smoking whiskey, drinking rascals, and come in over morning, and a close half on her, and everything like that, and you call yourself a Christian, and say nothing to her. Let that happen over in Kentucky. And one of them, old mummies, will top one of them little, Hickory is out there, shouldn't be able to move for about six months, yes sir. What we need today is some old, real old time American mummies that believe in giving them a little protoplasma stimulation once <laughs> in a while. That's exactly right. You know that's right, amen. Church all let down the bars. They all sing, they let on the bars. We compromise with sin, we let on the bars. The ship got out, but how do they go? It's get in. You just let down the bars. That's what it is. You let down the standards of Christianity, amen. 
The devil might have went out of fashions, but he hasn't went out of business yet. He's still in the business. We'll save that for the preachers. I just came here to preach divine healing, all right? But that's good for you, amen? That will straighten you up. It's old-fashioned cornbread and black eyed peas and strong coffee for breakfast. But those will stick to your ribs for a day's work. Sure will, all right? Notice, yes, sir. The day that we are living, the hour, the time, the church ought to be going forward. Instead of that, it's going backwards. That's right. You can't go. If you're not going forward, you're going backwards. God don't want his church to go backwards or sit still. He wants us to go forward and don't slack at all. The Holy Spirit don't say slack up there for a few years. He said go forward constantly at the time. Move on. Where was she moving? To the mount of God, moving up the mountain all the time. I used to sing a little song, lead me higher up the mountain. Give me fellowship with thee. Remember the old song? It'll light us to the fountain and the blood that cleanses me. Way up the mountainside, she said to that servant, don't you let that mule even catch his breath. Just keep him a-going. And that's the way to do it. Lay it on to the church. Let's keep moving. The trouble of it is, you load the church down. I had an old colored brother here some time ago preaching on the wise men coming to see Jesus. And he sure gave a good illustration. He said that they went to pack out the old camels, you know, and said the first thing, you know, said two of them struck out. And said then, this one fellow began to pack the camel. Got him so loaded down to the old fellow couldn't move. And that's just the way it's been with the church. We bring in all kinds of little societies and all kinds of little that and the other and little entertainments and so forth and cut out the real value of the prayer meeting. The upper room turned into a supper room. That's right. That's good for you. They can get some old tough rooster and boil him up and sell it about a dollar plate to pay the preacher. If you take God's plan, all paid tithes, and do what the Lord told you to do, you'd be a lot better off and turned that room into a prayer room at night time, amen? Oh my, let's go forward. If we only preach to the church justification, let's take them a little further with that now. Go a little higher. If we get into that, God begins to fill with the Holy Spirit. Then let's go to divine healing and search that out. Well, the Holy Ghost, just like a great big apartment store, the people that become Christians don't know what they own. Could you imagine me buying a house without looking all over it first? Could you imagine me owning a place like somebody give me a big arcade, great big place where everything's just everything. It's all mine. Well, that's the way it is when you come to Christ. Everything belongs to you. All the redemptive blessings that Christ died for is yours. Every believer has possession of every redemptive blessing, amen, is give to the believer. By one spirit, we are all baptized into this big arcade, Christ Jesus. My, up on this shelf here, justification by faith. Over here, sanctification through the blood. Up here is joy. Here is peace. There is long-suffering, goodness, gentleness. My, why? My everything. Some of them may be hanging a little high. I can't get to them. But they got a step ladder over in the corner. Let's get up, look at it, and see what it looks like. If you can't reach up to divine healing, take God's step ladder. Reach up and find out what it's all about. It all belongs to you, right? That's what the church ought to be going, moving up the road. So the woman said, now, you go forward. Don't you slack a bit. Because we got to get up there now. We got to make haste. Well, the servant of God was setting up in his little den room, wherever it was, back in the mountains, and he looked out, and he seen the Shunammite coming. He said, Gehazi said, here comes the Shunammite woman. I wonder what's the matter. Now, God don't tell his prophets everything. He just tells them what he wants them to know. What they don't, he don't want them to know. He just keeps it to himself. But here comes the Shunammite woman, and this little servant just a beating the mule in a hurry, said, I wonder what the hurry is about. Said, go out and meet her. And said, ask her if all is well with her. All is well with her husband. And all is well with the child. So he hollered, said, is all well with thee? Is all well with thy husband? Is all well with the child? Look, here's what I like about the lesson. She said, 
all is well amen the baby a corpse but all is well what was it everything was under the consideration then she had the situation curbed her heart's desire what was telling her in her heart was to get to that prophet and there she was right in the presence of the prophet so if god had took her baby and that was his will everything would be right all is well all is well with my husband all is well with me and all is well with the baby she ran right up to elisha and fell down at his feet perhaps begin to kiss his hands and something he has a thought that's not right for her to act around my master like that so he jacked her up and threw her away from him here you can't do that you can't come to my master like that elisha said let her alone for the sorrow in her heart and God kept it at a secret from me. I don't know what's the matter with her, but there's a sorrow in her heart. Then she raised up and she began to reveal to him what had happened, saying that what had taken place, that her baby had died, and said, Didn't I tell you? Don't lie to me. Now the baby's dead. I've got him laying in your room. The neighbors are all around. They're fixing to unbalm his body. And I've come to you. Now what? Elisha said, Take this stuff, Gehazi, and you go forward. And if anybody speaks to you, don't you even speak to them. Take this straight to the baby and lay it on the baby. Or if someone speaks to you, don't speak back. Just don't stop for any social affair. That's what's the matter with us today. When we get a message from God, instead of going straight and doing what God tells us, we stop for a social affair. Got to have this, a few ice cream suppers and all these other kind of things. Bring social affairs to the church. We ought to take God's message to the dead, the dead with sin and trespass. Amen. Notice now, Elisha, why did he send that stuff? Did you ever stop to think? Because that Elisha knew that the clothes that he wore was blessed. He knew God lived in his heart. He knew that the clothes he wore was blessed. He knew that everything he touched was blessed. He knew that himself so his faith laid in it so he the staff on i think that's where paul got the handkerchief and aprons off his body to the sick and afflicted so he but the shunammite woman now that would have worked all right that would have been fine if the shunammite woman would have believed that but she didn't know about whether god was in the staff or not she knew god was in the man so she said, as the Lord liveth, and as your soul never dies, I'm not going to leave you. I'm on your hands now. I'm going to stay right here till I find out. You know, I like that. That determination, stay with it. That's what's the trouble with the people today. They read where God's a healer, and they look around and say, well, Mrs. Jones didn't get it. And you, then you give it up. Brother, stay right with it, amen. If God said so, God's got to take care of his word, not your own God's word. Stay right with it. Said, I'm not going to leave you. And so Elisha girded up his loins, and here he went with a revision, not knowing what to do. And away they went. Gehazi beat them. He went ahead, went into the room, and laid the stuff upon the baby, waited. No life come. Baby still dead. He turns around a little while, Still, the baby was dead. So he picks up the staff and runs back and he meets Elisha and the Shunammat woman coming. And so when he did, he said, I laid the staff up on the baby. And there was no life, no breath. He didn't open his eyes. He's still dead. So see, the woman's faith wasn't in the staff. It was in the prophet. Now, it depends on where your faith is. Some people said, you've got to have hands laid on you. The other said, the Roman said, just speak the word and my son shall live and yet the one woman didn't want him to lay hands on her she touched his garment and little jairus in a few nights ago in the lesson why he said come lay your hands on my daughter it depends on where your faith lays so elisha was right and i believe he's just probing but he knew that God had blessed whatever he touched. You see it? He believed that God blessed it. So he said, God has blessed this. And if you lay it on the baby, I believe that God will make it well. Now, no matter what his faith was, 
if the woman's faith wasn't the same, then it won't work. You see what I mean? It takes your faith and your pastor's faith together. You've got to have the same faith. If you believe the same thing that the man of God has told you, then something's got to happen. So the man of God believed that he wouldn't have to go over there. He will just send the stuff. But the woman said, no, no, no. I'm going to stay right with you. I'm going to stay right here till I find out. So then Gehazi said, there's no breath in the baby. He's still dead. So away they went. Come into the yard and now look at the crowd. Everybody around are wailing, are screaming. What a place of faith. Elisha standing there, no vision, didn't know what to do. All he could do was look around. There was the father screaming. There was all the neighbors and everybody carrying on. Well, he goes around to his little old chamber and the woman had the baby laying on the bed. So he shut everybody out of the room and pulled the door together by himself, went over in a corner and knelt down and began to pray. When he got through praying, he got up, walked up and down the floor, <clears throat> back and forth to and fro, up and down the floor, until the Spirit of God came upon him. When the Spirit of God came upon him, no doubt, but what he saw a vision, goes over, stretches himself on top of the baby, his nose again, its nose, no prayer, just the nose against his nose, lips against his lips, eyes against his eyes, hands against his hands, and the baby squeezed seven times and come to life. What was that? That wasn't that creature. That was Christ in his prophet that brought that baby back to life. Hallelujah. Oh my, when he stood out there, then and said, Gehazi, call that Shunammite, amen. The woman come to the door, then all good things that she had done, little did she know when she had that bed made in their foolishness huh, and made his bed with her own hands that some day had it baby be laying there. And the body of the prophet through the Christ would bring the baby back to life again. You don't know what's happening when you try to do something for one another. Try to help one another, that's right. Like a bread upon the water, it will return to you someday. Her attitude towards Elisha brought her the victory. If she'd have went up to Elisha and said, now, you look here, you hypocrite. My pastor was right after all. See, if she'd have went away with that kind of an attitude, she'd have never got nothing from him. But her attitude towards the man of God produced exactly what she got, her victory, because she believed that's the only way that you'll ever do if you believe that Jesus Christ, some mythical story, some Santa Claus of fear that they tell children, or something like that, you'll never get nothing until truly in your heart that you believe he's a son of God, died, rose again, ascended on high, and is living with us right here tonight, and will do anything that he promised he would do in his Bible when you get like that. Something's fixing to happen. Then she picked up the baby and bowed before him and recognized him to be a servant of God and bowed her head and went out, went out with her heart full of love. All the great crises, what if she just sat still and said, well, all hope is gone. The doctor just left and said this was nothing could be done and now my baby is dead. So I suppose that's all can be done, said, said helpless. The story would have never been told. If no faith had ever went, come into her heart, it would have been that way. But God in his mercy placed something in that mother's heart that she knew there was something could be done. You may be sitting like that tonight in your family. Maybe every hope that you've ever had, that you've had of ever getting well, the doctors discourage you. The man has done all he can do and said, it's past medical science, there's nothing can be done. But if something can just happen down here in his heart that tells you, yes, it is, yes, it is, then stay right with it. Paul Rader, a friend of mine, Baptist preacher, died here some years ago over in here in California. A wonderful man, missionary, great believer in healing, told a little story once, said he was way down South America, somewhere on a missionary trip, he and his wife. And he developed some kind of a fever, yellow fever. 
I believe it was a black water fever and it kills you in just a few hours. And he was a way back, miles and miles back in the jungles with the natives, went back there on a little boat and said that after supper that night, they'd eaten and he went into his room. He was getting sick and sicker and he said to his loving wife, he said, darling, if you'll just kneel down here and start praying for me, said, I believe that it seems like um is getting black in the room. So she knelt down, held her hands up, said, honey, do you want me to go for a doctor? Said, no, don't go for the doctor. It'll be too long. Said, hard telling. It's coming night like this. He said, you couldn't get the doctor now. He said, just pray for me, honey, and keep your hands on me. And it kept getting darker and darker in the room. As his lights begins to fade out, after a while, it all become dark. Said he was dreaming there. He was back in Oregon again. That was his home where he used to chop the trees. He was a very strong man. And said he, his boss, one time told him he was dreaming. Uh, that said, go up the mountain, Paul, and cut me a certain size log and bring it down. He said, all right, boss. He ran up the hillside, said, with a spring of youth in his feet again in his dream, when he was unconscious, and said, he felt the tree right easy. He said, he could feel the axe as it went down through the soft Oregon fur, and the tree dropped. He trimmed it up like that, stuck his axe into the tree, and tried to pick it up. Oh, he said his strength was gone from him. He said he done everything he could to pick it up. He said, well, my strength is completely gone. Maybe that's where you are tonight. Your strength completely gone. The hopes is gone. Everything's gone. Said he toiled. And he said, oh, well, I ought to be able to lift this. I ought to be able to pick this up. Why? I picked them up like this before. Maybe you've been healed before. Maybe you've been through prayer lines and you've been healed. But this time, you just simply can't master enough faith to get it up the road somehow. He said he just got completely worn out. So he just sat down, ducked his head down and started crying. Said, I'm so weak, I can't move. And I've lost my strength and I don't know what I'll do. Said he heard his voice of his, the voice of his boss, so gentle and kind. Said he said, Paul, what's the matter? He said, boss, I haven't got the strength to pick it up. I just simply can't get it down there. He said, Paul, you're just doing in vain. You're just tussling in vain. And he said, Paul, don't you see that stream going down there? Said, that stream runs right by the camp. Said, why don't you just push it over in the water and jump on it and ride down? And said, when he looked back, his boss was Jesus, said, just pitch it over in the water, Paul. Don't you try anymore. Just get it on it and write it down. Said he just pitched it over in the water, jumped in water, began to splash in water, and the current taking it right on down to camp. He began screaming at the top of his voice that his strength was all coming to him, hollering, I'm riding on it. And said he come to in the room, screaming at the top of his voice. His wife, who had been having her hands laying on him praying, said he jumped up in the middle of the room, screaming. When he came to himself, I'm riding on it, I'm riding on it, I'm riding on it. Brother, that's what it is tonight. I take just Christ as his promise, throw the thing into the waters of the Holy Ghost, and I'll ride on it. Hallelujah. No matter what takes place, I'm riding on it, right? Just keep riding. No matter what everyone, anybody else says, no matter how many times you tried, just push it over and start riding on it. God will take you right down to the place where you ought to be. Don't you believe it? Why is that, hasn't it been seven years ago till my brothers looked me in the face and said, Evan Branham, you haven't a chance to live. But I took him at his word. I'm out riding on it, amen. He promised someday he will deliver me over on the other side. The age is coming on, but I'm riding on it. Some of these days I'll take out of this life, but I'm riding on it tonight. And every promise in the book is mine. Every chapter, every verse is mine. 
O oh my God promised, he that heareth my word, believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but pass from death unto life. I am riding on it, I believe it. Christ said, So what? He that heareth my words, and believeth on him that sent me, has right now everlasting life, and shall never come into condemnation, but pass from death unto life. I have been riding on it for 23 years. Hallelujah, the journey will still be in, and when it's ended, I'll still be riding on it. Why? I was once a blind man, wore great thick glasses, led around by an arm like this, down the streets, couldn't see but a little piece in front of me. And tonight, by the grace of God, I can read newspaper print five feet away from me. Have an eye test here a year ago, it was 1010. That's 2020, then 1515, then 1010. What was it? I took God at his promise and I rode on it until God delivered me my sight. Now I can sing Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Tis grace that taught my heart to fear. Grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear. The hour I first believed. Hallelujah. Oh, when I think of it, take God at his promise and go forward. Go forward in faith. What? Faith in what? Believing that what God said anchored here in my heart and it's my personal property because Jesus died for it. I'm a riding on it. I believe it. And seen a friend tonight when the world was in chaos, the atomic and cobalt bombs hanging everywhere. One bomb. I was talking to a prospector a while ago that told me how much power was in one pound of uranium. How many t thousands times thousands times thousands of tons of TNT would take the pressure of that one pound of uranium. And I heard Mr. Moore say that one of his jet-powered friends told him that he carried a bomb on his plane. And I forgot how many hundred boxcars full of TNT, right loaded all the way from Shreveport to Houston, Texas, or send the boxcars like it that was loaded with TNT. This bomb had more pressure and power than all that string of boxcars did with TNT. A great cobalt bomb. The cobalt around the atomic bomb can be shot up to a missile out into the air yonder by our enemies in a force out there in a few hours the entire earth will be totally annihilated just let the winds start blowing there can't be a living thing live around it and just completely annihilate the earth could be done just in a few minutes' time. The very enemy, the very godless, heartless, brutal, insane enemy of ours has that thing in their hands tonight. And why do you trust in the flesh of horses? Why do you trust in the atomic power? Why do you trust in the things of this world, in your houses, in your places, in your positions? Take God at his word and ride on it through the atoms yonder into the spheres yonder into the heavens whatever god has promised god will do do you believe it tonight god be merciful let's get in contact with god's representative who is god's representative it was at that day elijah who is it today jesus christ that's his representative man woman boy girl here tonight if that shinamite woman could believe for a dead son when all the impossibilities was gone, she could believe on a natural man that God was in Elisha. How much more can you believe that God is in Christ, reconciling the world to himself? Come and be reconciled tonight before it's too late. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, as you look around about us and see the day, the time that we are living, the great things happening, seeing scattered on the newspapers today, that doctor here, the city, jealous spirit kills four little children shot his own wife to death and and killed himself right in the city the devil got a hold of him god's people just don't believe it's the devil let them open their eyes tonight and see and then father may they look up past him and see there's a living god full of love and compassion waiting to save them grant it lord 
come near to us now, Father. We believe that in your name, what we ask, we will receive. There's men, women, boys and girls in here, perhaps, Lord, that's never yet accepted thee as their Savior. They don't know what it means to have peace in their soul. And all these old things of the earth pass away, and the soul, the immortal part, that goes beyond every sphere of atom, goes on beyond cosmic light, petroleum, goes on into the spiritual realm. And that's the eternal part. That's a part that cannot perish. When it's believed on the Lord Jesus, how simple he made it, just come, receive, ask, ye shall receive. He that heareth my words, believeth on him, that sent me has everlasting life. Sounds simple. You said, even a fool wouldn't error. Nothing binding, nothing complicated, just purely accepting it, believing it. Because Jesus, because Christ talking to the heart, you said, no man can come to me except my father dwells him first. Father God, upon the basis of the shed blood of the Lord Jesus, upon his supreme sacrifice and the word of God, I pray tonight that you will knock at every sinner's heart, every backslider in the building, bring them lovely back to thee just another night, and then we must move on. Grandfather, that tonight may they find thee, for we ask it in his name. While we have our heads bowed, music is sweetly, softly playing, the Holy Spirit just above you, looking down, God knocking on your heart, saying, O sinner, come on home. You may not be here tomorrow to accept it. Won't you come tonight? If God's knocking at your heart, and you can feel that it's God speaking to you, not to me now, but to God, Will you raise up your hand to him and say, God, forgive me. I now accept Jesus as my savior. God bless you, lady. God bless you, lady. God bless you, son. God bless you, lady. Way in the back. God bless you, lady. Someone else, raise your hand saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner now. I'm coming. The preacher has been preaching. God bless you, lady. Weeping there. God bless you, lady. At the end, I see you. The minister has been preaching. I've been here night after night watching to see the Holy Spirit moving, healing the sick, foretelling, telling forth things and mysterious things to mankind. We can't figure it out. I'm not going to try to figure any longer, Lord. I'm just going to accept you right now while you're knocking at my heart because I know your spirit won't always try with me. So while you're calling me now, this is my hand, Lord, I come. Will you raise your hands? somewhere else somebody god bless you sir god bless you lady over in the corner god bless you way back in the back god bless you down here in the middle of the aisle god bless you over here in the corner up in the balcony to my left oh my god bless you all there that a great row of hands god be with you remember when when you were saved right then for eternity over to the balcony to my right someone up there lift up your hands once to settle it tonight, once for all, from your heart, God speaking. The word is Zoe, God's own life. So if God can't perish, neither can you. God bless you. God bless you, lady out there at the corner, a young lady. I see your hand. God bless you. You give everlasting life now. God bless you, little girl down there. I see your hand too, honey. All right. Down here in the aisle, yeah, I see you back over here god sees you i see the spanish brother back there him and his family with their hands up god bless you that's right got everlasting life what would the atomic bomb could do for you the atomic bomb would have a strike right in your front yard my brother the only thing it could do take you to jesus and give you a new body a new life you have it right now you have it right now you've got the very seed in you that will produce that life everlasting life because you believed on the only begotten son of god someone else listen if you can raise your hand and be healed you can be saved god bless you little spanish girl god bless you and the other lady over there god bless you god bless you oh that's fine a bunch of new hands going up let the holy spirit just soak down god bless you sir sitting here with the glasses on the gray-headed man god bless you sir way back in the back i see your hand lady way back there god says this too god bless you the young blonde-headed woman 
over there with their hands up. God bless you. Two young ladies down here with your hands up. God bless you, honey. That's fine. Up here, the little lady in the balcony sing, and the little boy back there too. You see, what about them little children? Sure. Jesus is talking to their hearts. Sometimes their dolls is so calloused. The Holy Spirit just can't speak to them. Jesus said, Suffer little children that come to me, forbid them not. Such is the kingdom. All right. Every sinner now that's in the building, if you haven't put up your hand to Christ, will you put it up just now and accept him as your own personal savior to believe from this night on? God bless you, sir. See you way up there in the balcony with your hands up now. You receive Christ and to receive Christ is life. You pass from death to sin now and to life eternal. If you people could only realize, God bless you, lady, back there, the young lady with her hands up. God bless you, lady, a little fellow there with a red shirt on. Seeing your hand, honey boy, that's just fine. Yes, you're not. You're all right. I baptized my boy when he was no older than you. Just that's right. God bless you. You back here, the young lady and the young man there. God bless you. God bless you. You too, Sunny, over here. God bless you, young man. Have a lasting life. Let's think how simple God made it. Just believe, accept. That's all you can do is believe. There's nothing else you can do. Jesus said, if they'll believe, I'll give him everlasting life. Raise him up at the last days. Yes, down here. God bless you. That's fine. God bless you. All right. Now, shall we keep our heads bowed? Just a moment. We're going to present this before the Father under the blood of Jesus, under his own word. Now, Father, your beloved Son, the Lord Jesus, when he stood here on earth, according to the scriptures, which is the infallible word of God, that can't fail, you said, He that heareth my words, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into the condemnation, but has passed from death unto life. We thank thee, Father, for this greatest miracle of all the miracles, sinners receiving Christ. We thank thee for this. God grant that no one of them, Father, will ever fail to keep their faith and remember this night. And Father, when I come before you to judgment to answer these words I have presented to the people the word, shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever Spanish, colored Europe, Ethiopian, Indian, Anglo-Saxon, whosoever believeth on him shall not perish but have everlasting life because they believe that God sent his son to die in sinners' place. We thank thee for them. We pray that each one of them will have a long journey through the earth, health, happiness while they're here. And at the day when I preach my last sermon, close the Bible for the last time, and when you stand in your presence, may I see them there and us rolling around the throne with each other, so happy. Say, down at Phoenix that night, I lifted my hand. I believe God knocked at my heart and I responded, Oh, what a life I had. Wonderful is having the Lord. And here they are now immortal, granted, Father. And tonight, when the service is closed, may each of them come back here in the prayer room and kneel down and say, Thank you, Father, for saving me. Now fill me with the Holy Spirit. You uh, baptize me with unction. Just pour an abundance of the Spirit upon their lives. Granted, Lord, for we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Oh, how you want him to say well done on the eternal day. Don't turn the dear Savior away from your heart. Don't turn him away. Oh, don't you feel good? You that raised your hands a while ago, raise your hands if you feel like something's happening to you. Just raise your hands. Everyone that raised your hands, oh my, is not wonderful sure. I remember down, way down the mountains of Kentucky, the old-fashioned Missionary Baptist Church. They used to start singing that. The old women and them, don't turn him away. To see them old boys back there, old hat on, scream, and at the altar accepting everlasting life, believing on the Lord Jesus. Now, to you new converts now, that just come into the Lord Jesus, accepted everlasting life, I want to ask you something. Now, Jesus, the scripture teaches, he raised from the dead and claims that the very works that he did here 
when he was here on earth, he will do it through the church until he comes again. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the works that I do shall he also, and more than this shall he do, for I go unto my Father. The word there is greater. Greater means more. You couldn't do anything with greater quality or quantity, but in quality more of it. He could be everywhere in all the churches since he has risen from the dead. Now, he seen visions, said, I don't do nothing till my father shows me. And what the father shows me that I do. He's seen the woman's trouble at the well. He knew where Nathaniel got, or Philip found Nathaniel when he was praying. A fellow came up and he knew his name, knew who he was, told him what his name was, looked out into the audience, perceived their thoughts. A woman touched his garment and he turned around and said, Strength went out of me. He looked out into the audience where she was till he found he had found her, said, Thy faith has healed thee. That's the kind of a Jesus he was when he was here on earth. Well, if he is the same in power, same in respect, same in attitude, same in all, he is the same in everything. Yesterday, today, and forever. He said, A little while, and the world won't see me no more. That's a believer. Yet you shall see me. That's a believer. For I, I, as I say, is a personal pronoun. I will be with you, even in you, not just with the apostles' age, until the end of the world. Jesus Christ, the same message to end forever. Now, we're going to pray for the sick. In a few moments, I'm not a healer. I'm just like you are a sinner, saved by grace. That's all. And the Lord has. And I was born a little baby up there in the mountains. This light here that we have, many of you have seen it, that was hanging over my little crib bed that I was in. little trundle affair had been... Uh, with me ever since. It's not me that sees the visions, it's him that shows them. So it's nothing I have, see? It's what God has given to you. It's not my faith that does it, it's your faith. Your faith does the moving of it itself. I can't make it move. It's you that makes it move, see? You have to believe it yourself. And in believing so, if you correctly believe, God will grant you a request. Not because it's the Lord Jesus. How many knows that the first time Jesus appeared to lead the people, he was in the form of the pillar of fire. The angel of the covenant led the children of Israel. The second time he appeared, he was in the form of a man called Jesus. The third time he appears, he is in the form of a spirit called the Holy Spirit. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. You get it? Amen? That's him. Now, he's just the same today as he was when he led the children in the pillar of fire. It's only thing it is God condescending, bring himself down way up there on the mount. Moses, no one, even if an animal touched the mountain, had to be killed. No sacrifice, no blood sacrifice that could take their place. So sinners couldn't approach the Holy God. Then the next thing, he come down, born of a virgin, a virgin birth. And God came into his son, Christ Jesus, reconciling the world to himself. You could touch him he was a different person what's God doing breaking his blood cell to sanctify a church that he could come down himself and have fellowship with the people see how God loves you he's brought you couldn't do nothing about it he's brought himself down and cleaned his road as he come through away sin till he could come down and fellowship with Adam again do you see it he fellowshiped with him before sin came then he had to come and make a way to take sin out. Now, he fellowships with him again, the same Holy Spirit, the same Father moving among his people. Just so simple. Nothing strange about it. It's God. Now, he will be here tonight, I trust, and will do the same thing that he did when he was here on earth in a physical form. God raised that body up, sets on the throne of God today. Christ is not on his right throne. He is on God's throne now in the heavens, but when he returns back, he will come to David's throne, which he is an heir to. Now, notice, now he's here in the form of spirit tonight to do the same thing. Love, same love. He just saved the sin out there. That's the love he had. Now, he will heal the sick, same love he had. He will show signs and wonders, just the same love he had, the same Jesus. If he will do that, will you receive him? God bless you now. Father God, we pray. I shall grant this, and I submit myself to thee now, through Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Bill or prayer cards, was we? Q. 
we was calling from last night, wasn't we? Prayer card Q, I believe it was. I believe we call the French bus of them. Let's call the last part Q tonight. He isn't here just at the time. Let's, it's prayer cards Q. Does anybody have them? Look out there, that's fine, all right. Let's call from Q's then. Let's call from the last part of them. The last, how many did we have? 15 last night on, 15 or 16. But Barnum can, speaks to someone, all right. Let's call the last 15, that would be from 85 to 100, Q85. Does anybody have it? Raise your hands, that's right, quick. Q85, raise up your hand, please. Anybody have it? The girl? All right, sister, come here. 86, quickly. There's a little card with my picture on it. And the number, and the number, and the letter on the back. Q85, 86. Was it a six, lady? Raise your hand. Quickly now, save some time. Is uh, this it? It is 7, 88, all right. Q, prayer card 88, all right. Prayer card Q89, 89, Q90. Q90, anyone have it? Would you raise your hands right quick? Prayer card Q90. Look at somebody's card somewhere. It's all right. All right. 90, 91, raise your hand so we can see. Help me, if you will. 91, somebody there for something that can't get up, you know. Then Q91, come to the afternoon meetings. They give us the prayer cards. 91. Is Q91 here, 92, all right, lady, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, up to 100. Now look around and see if they come into the meeting, come into the line, and now, if we can, if everybody be reverent, maybe you can get out then and give out, and call some more from this, more prayer cards. If everybody try to hold faith and believe while, they're coming. I want to pray for these clothes here again. Shall we bow our heads a moment? Dear loving Jesus, upon the basis of the word of God, realize that Elijah, the Bible said he was a man subject to life's passions as we are. He had ups and downs. He had his troubles like we have. But he sent a stick that he'd be walking with to learn a dead baby. Paul called himself the chief of sinners on his road down to Damascus to lock up all the people that went this way and the Holy Spirit struck him down and chose him for a vessel to bear the word of God to the Gentiles. And they believed the apostle so much till they took from his body handkerchiefs and aprons and they laid them on the sick and unclean spirits went out and evil and infirmities and the people were made well. Now we realize, Lord, that the prophet has gone and so has Paul, but Jesus remains forever. And we pray, Father, that in this day that the people's faith, believing that you'll now bless these handkerchiefs and little parcels in here, and when they are laid on the sick, may they each be healed, for we send them in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Now, everyone reverent, and I believe that uh, it's got a little cool in here. i seen the women putting their coats on, maybe. If they'd shut the fans off, it might be a little better. And the custodian will please. And then notice, friend, I want to ask you something while they're lining the people up. Now, if Jesus of Nazareth stood here tonight wearing the suit that I have on that he gave me several years ago in Sweden, if he stood here wearing the suit, and for instance, this girl here or somebody along the line there come up here to him and say, Lord, will you heal me? What do you think Jesus would say to them? He'd say, I can't. I have already done it. When Jesus died at Calvary, he healed every sick person that could believe that he did it for them then. Is that right? What if the sinner a while ago would say, Now, Lord, will you save me? What if the sinner came up here to the platform and say, and Jesus was standing here, say, Jesus, will you save me? He'd say, well, son, I saved you 1900 years ago. Do you accept it now? If he'd say, well, I want you to do it now. He'd say, I've already done it. So if there's any person ever tell you that they can save you or heal you, it's an error. Because no one can do what's already been done. See, Jesus died to save sinners and heal the sick people. That's what, and he's sitting tonight at the right hand of God 
as a high priest who come in touch to the feeling of infirmities. Is that right? Making what intercessions upon a confession sin, he cannot do one thing for you until first you believe in your heart that he has done it and then see that he's done it and the minute that you believe it and say it then before god he says it's right he's there to make intercession upon your confession now you could come to the altar here and scream and cry and walk up and down the floor and scream god save me a sinner that will undo a speck of good you could do that tonight, all night, all day tomorrow, and the next night between the floor, anything you want to do. You are just giving vent to your feeling. But you can never be saved until you first believe it and then confess it. For he said, if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before the Father and the Holy Angels in the right. The minute you do, and if you're just doing it from your head, well, it doesn't matter. If you're doing it from your heart, well, it's settled right there. It has to be new regenerated person right then he that heareth my words and believeth on him that sent me has right now everlasting life and shall never perish but pass from death to life just because you believe it's all the same thing by divine healing you don't have to be up here on the platform you just believe right where you're sitting look up to jesus and say i know believe it and accept it and you're my healer right now. At that very minute, he confesses that same thing before I met God, saying, By my stripes, I recognize him healed, see? And you're just as sure to get well as he's God. He has to, God just can say something and take it back. He's got to keep his word. I can say something and take it back. You can too. But he can't. He's God. Once spoken, that settles it, right? Now, what could be done for these people now? These standing in the line, just a few of them here, we called a few of them up here to the platform. And my Heavenly Father knows that as far as I know, I've never seen a person in that line, frankly. There's nobody in the building. I thought this man sitting right here a while ago, his brother, J.H. Brown from Little Rock. But it isn't. And you know it. Doesn't he look a lot whole like him? But I thought it was Brother Brown, but it isn't. If I'm not mistaken, this is Brother Fuller sitting right over here. If I'm not mistaken, sitting right there. And this man here, I don't know him, but I know his face. But I don't know his name. Outside of that, outside of my own brethren right here, there's not a person in this building that I see that I know. That's right. Now, I'm not saying that if you know me, I am, see, I just don't know you, you see, or I don't recognize you. God knows that. And yes, I see the lady set up there, her sister. I know that lady. She's from Tucson, Mrs. Morgan. The first vision I ever seen in my life, her sister was a 21-year graduate nurse in Louisville, Kentucky. She's been dead about 14 years. She's nursing at Clark County Memorial Hospital. And she came after the angel of the Lord had administered to me this, told me what it was, and about these visions that the ministers told me that it was a devil. And he let me know that it was the Spirit of God. And they just didn't understand like they did in the other days. And Mrs. Morgan was the first one to come. Mrs. McDowell had been healed of his eyes. Mrs. Morgan, Mr. Morgan, her husband said, come. And said, now I wonder if you'll work on my wife. She's dying. Taking radium, x-rays. Oh my, she's out of her head. So he come ask me. I said, it's not for me to question it. It's for you to question do you believe it? I believe it. So he brought her over, here over, and the lady right here was present that night. And when the woman with cancer, it went all through, went from the breast, down through the admin, into the intestinal tract. And the doctor, when he opened her up, why? He said, just like the roots of a tree wrapped, he couldn't even wash her out with an animal. See, there's nothing to do but let her die. And she got so low to the doctor, told her husband, said, now, did you, if you want to take her out to the hospital, over to Jeffersonville, said you can take her, just because she's always, uh, said she liked the river. 
let her see the river before she dies but said there ain't nothing can be done for her well that being my first laying there like that a dying woman but when i took hold of her hand two nights or three nights before the lord jesus had made me appear and his angel stood by me and said this thing would happen that i was going into all the world testifying of it at the platform that night when praying for her the holy spirit spoke back thus saith the lord and today she is a healthy and strong fine lovely woman and that's her sister sitting there a witness is that right sister if it is that's right lovely and a great attorney come from up north he heard about it and he come down wanted to find out so he went to the cancer clinic in louisville and she's been dead for years he said you want to meet her said she's a liveliest dead person you ever seen still nursing me and my wife in a few weeks now with the baby she's been with it all along the loveliest friend one of the loveliest friends i have in the world yeah i didn't see you sister i'm sorry i didn't notice you sitting back in the crowd especially standing up here and the light shining in a different way it's kind of hard anyone standing up here can see it's hard just to see the people out in there <clears throat> And now notice, but if Jesus has risen from the dead, what did he do when he was here on earth? I just take your time. Don't be in no hurry. What did he do? One thing to recognize the truth or to settle it forever. When Jesus was here on earth, did he claim to be a healer? No, sir. He said, I don't do any healing at all. He said, it's my father does the healing. That dwells in me. Is that right? I said, I as a son can do nothing. What did he do? He was possessed with the power of God without measure. We have it in measure. He has it without measure. Just like go out in the ocean, get a spoonful of the water. It's just a spoonful out of the ocean. That'll be just a little gift here at the side of him. But remember, the same chemicals that's in the spoonful of water is in the whole ocean, see? The same thing, but just smaller, see? Way smaller. But when he was standing, the people would look and believe and certain things, and he would call out in the audience and say things. Philip brought Nathaniel. He said, Behold an Israelite in whom there is no girl. He said, How do you know me, Rabbi? He said, Before Philip got you, when you were under the tree, I saw you. He told the woman at the well, after he talked to her a while to contact her spirit, there was something about him that's in visions. And Jesus said when he passed by a lot of cripples and twisted people and so forth, and went over to a man laying on a pallet and said, Now watch. Jesus knew that he was there. God had showed him. He healed that man, told him to take up his bed, go to his house. Well, my, when the Jews found him and questioned him, they brought Jesus into question. Here's what he said, Very, well, very, really, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing in himself, but what he sees the Father doing, that with the Son likewise is alright. Then Jesus' own word said he could do nothing at all until the Father showed him first what to do. Look at the resurrection of Lazarus, m many other things there. The blind man come by one time wanted to be prayed for. He didn't have no vision for him. He just touched their eyes, said, Now according to your faith, be it to you. The woman touched his garment and went out in the audience, stood around out there a little bit, and he looked around and said, When he found her, said, Thy faith has healed thee. Thy faith has saved thee, physically saved thee. Same words, sozo, save thee, save thee. Physical or spiritual, same word. Same every time in the Bible, where healing or saving is the same Greek word, sozo. Any minister knows that they studied. Sozo, thy faith has saved thee physically, saved thee spiritually. Now, if Jesus was here tonight, then when he went away, he said this A little while in the world, the unbeliever, they won't believe it. What did the people think about it that day? What did they say he was? Well, they, did he say, that's truly the son of God? 
the great religious world. They said he's the best fortune teller in the country. He's a Beelzebub, the chief of the devils, is a right. But what did the devil say he was? The son of God. So the devil was more like the preachers was. So, and then you know what? They were more subject to spirits than fortune tellers than what the preacher was. That's exactly right. And here's a little something on the side. What was all that up for on the reservation the other day? Up on the Indian reservation. Get what I mean? More subjects to spirit. We people are all scholarly and educated. My, well, things way back gone. But the Easterner, brother, he believes that if Jesus was here tonight and come in and do the same things he did that he did when he was here on earth, what will he do to these people here? Now, if he's already healed them, now what could he do? Now, it's all the way through preaching the word. He let them know what he believes and what he did. Now, if they can't accept it that way, that's the best way. That's the initial healing. Is that right? That's the initial way. Faith cometh by hearing by the word. Now, it's not that. Then he sent gifts into the church. Some apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, gifts of tongues, interpretation of tongues, all those for the edifying of the church. Now, I'm not so much of a preacher. The only thing that I can do is just by a gift to see visions. Not here, not here in the church. Mercy. This is the amateur side of it. Ask my associates that deal with me around other places why visions come from everywhere all the time. Foretelling things that will happen on the road and all along. And just ask anybody if ever one time it ever failed. If it be William Branham, it always fail. But as long as it's the Lord Jesus Christ, it can't fail. That's right. And this picture here of him <laughs> that proves scientific world that I told the truth. That's his picture, which is not mine. It's copyrighted in Houston, Texas. And we just have to buy them and then the people have them. But now, if he will come in the power of his resurrection as and as uh, Christians contend, the full gospel people, all of them, contend that Jesus raised from the dead, then if he raised from the dead, and the same yesterday, today, and forever, he's got to do the same thing today that he did yesterday and forever. Is that right? He's just got to do it in order to be the same. Now, I hope that I know is not 100% with me tonight, but I... You can't hide that, my brother. But at it's so anyhow, see? Now, may he come and for the six of those believers. Now, how many here that doesn't have a prayer card and yet you want Jesus to heal you? Raise your hand. Just you want Jesus to heal you and then have a prayer card. I can just get a general conception of where you are. All right, let's pray. Father, in the name of the Son, the Lord Jesus, I now submit this poor, humble, unworthy body to you. I shall speak through these lips, look through these eyes, go to the hearts of the people out there, Lord, and give them faith to believe so that you can work through your servants together tonight for the glory of the resurrection of the Son, the Lord Jesus. Amen. Now, everyone, now please keep your positions, keep your seats, don't move around, just give us a little time. And I want to say tomorrow night, being the last night, if the Spirit of the Lord strikes me, of course, it's a little while I'm kinder, it's another dimension, it's another world. I don't know what I say. And they tell me, see this tape recording setting over yonder? That's why I pick up. Anybody wants to know what they said to them, just get on the tape recording there and you can pick it up. We do that because it's absolutely infallible the truth each time just go and find out and it's been that way i'm 45 years old it's been that way since the first thing i can remember as a little baby boy now be reverent you say what is it brother Branham? it's submitting yourself to the spirit of god just knowing how to submit yourself and you do the same thing you might not be able to see visions but you can submit yourself for the working of the holy spirit now in the name of the Jesus Christ, the Son of God, I take every spirit in here under my control for the glory of God. Amen. Now, if the engineer will watch, sometimes 
I catch on a tape, my voice is not very loud. Now this young girl standing here, she's a stranger to me. I never seen her in my life. As I know of, if it is, I know nothing about it. But God knows all about the child. He knows just exactly what's wrong with her or what she's here for anything. So if the angel of the Lord will come now and to this little lady standing here, speak to her and tell her of something that's been in your life in the past and will bring it up, whatever it is that you know, I know nothing about and as being strangers and uh, probably 14 15 years older maybe not that old and i'm 45 and so we were born years apart and perhaps hundreds of miles apart our first time to meet one another so then it'll have to come from god wouldn't it little lady well then if he will do that will the audience believe that he's raised from the dead and is living here today the same as he and forever well now, little lady, I will. Being the first here, of course, you are conscious that something is going on. Now, just as a child, you are a Christian, you are a believer, because your little spirit feels welcome seeing. If it wasn't, it'll be just turning back from him. But you realize that something is going on, don't you? That's a settling of that angel of the Lord coming down. Now, that will not hurt you. If you just believe on it, and it'll do you good. And now, talking to you, just like our Lord did the woman at the well. Well, then he had to get in contact with her somewhere. So, it had to be through spirit. One thing, you're all nervous, upset about something. And you're suffering with a kidney condition. It's in your kidneys. That is right, isn't it, sister? God bless your heart. Honey, don't worry. You believe now. All upset, we're in trouble. Probably what uh, making her have kidney trouble. Now, the Lord bless you, my sister. Now, if he's present now to do that for you, then you know me, just a man, and don't know you. And if he could tell you what your trouble was, well, surely his presence, then do you believe it's being the Lord Jesus? Then somehow in this unworthy temple, Jesus Christ speaks, doesn't he? Then if I'd lay hands on you, according to his word, you'd have to get well if you believe it. Isn't that right? The little lady seems to live for me again. Oh, you are. I see a man. It's a man's real sick. There's got something wrong with it. It's your father. There's something. He's dying. He's got a head. Something wrong with his head. It's a pressure or something in his head. And the man is dying. Your father, that's truth. Dear God, be merciful tonight. Come to the little child here, Lord, standing here deep in sorrow, broken up. Thou dost know all things, Father. Thou can do all things. And I pray that you bless her now. Bless her loved one that's so bad tonight. May the great Holy Spirit be at the room. Stay the hand of death in his audience. Lord is believers. And now ask this blessing. This little girl standing here for this, may she receive everything she come for. In the name of Jesus Christ, as your humble servant, I ask you to amen. God bless you, honey. God be with you. He said, if thou canst believe, all things are possible. Have faith. Don't disbelieve. Just have faith in God. Don't you believe now with all of your heart. I was said, he that believeth shall not be condemned. He that believeth shall not be condemned. All right? I see you have a personal worker lady, but I suppose we're strangers to one another. Just we are strangers that you've seen me. But being a personal worker, of course, you've seen me. <clears throat> but I mean to know one another, we are strangers to each other. But the Lord Jesus knows us both as in him. Now, if he will help me to know you, know something of you or something in that manner will accept him then now you know lady there's not a way in the world for me to know what you're standing there for isn't that right now not a way in the world i'm a total helpless when it comes to that only by the grace of god that i know but you're suffering something in the heart the heart trouble that's what it is true now you believe god that god will heal you believe that god will make you well now, what I'd have to do, not knowing what your trouble was, frankly, I don't think now, 
what it was. But whatever it was, I seen something that told me that's what it was. Now, that's enough to make a believer out of you, isn't it? I see you're interested in somebody else too. And thus, someone younger than you are, it's your child, it's your daughter. Your daughter is about, it's a domestic trouble in the family. You understand what I speak of? What's in your heart all this time? God bless you. Do you believe you receive what you ask for? Come here just a minute. Almighty God, be merciful now and let the Spirit come upon this our sister as I have my hands laid upon her and grant unto her, Father God, the deep desire of her heart for that which she asks for. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. God bless you, sister. And may grant you the riches of his blessing. How do you do, lady? Supposing a stranger to each other, two strangers. I don't know you, but just Christ does know you, doesn't he? Somebody touched him. The vision doesn't break, but it was right in here. Excuse me. I'm not beside myself. It's just uh, I can't explain it, you understand? You got lung trouble, haven't you? Just come from the hospital or are going to or something. I say hospital, look like a peer. Do you believe that Jesus Christ will make you well and take the thing away from you? You believe that he will do it. Will you come near? Precious Lord, I lay my hands upon the woman. Take the shadow of death from her father and may the light of life take its place. Grant it, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name, I ask it. Amen. God bless you, lady. Go believing now, have faith. You believe him with all of your heart, sister. You that bowed your head and said, Lord, have mercy on me. That sitting there with an up trouble, sitting right there. Yes, he had you. Now, isn't that what you are praying? If it is, raise up your hand. If that isn't right, you've been suffering this, some kind of a mental nervousness, haven't you? you got a habit of dropping things too, haven't you? I see you standing, drop a plate or something. I recently broke it. That's right. All right. Isn't that right? See, that's, it's not. Raise your hand. See, I don't know you, but God does. Now, you're healed. That's left you. You're going home to be well. Is this my, the patient? Are you? believing up there for this child little girl you believe god take that diabetes away from her make her well he was crying a while ago wasn't you have you got a prayer card you don't you don't need one god bless you honey you sitting up there with your little head down praying then wasn't you if that's right sweetheart raise your little hand like that see jesus heard your prayer and come back and tell me about you saying, can I be healed tonight, Jesus? Sure you can, sweetheart. Just accept it. That's all you have to do. And you can go home and get well. Let's say praise be to God who gives us the victory. Christian says praise be to God. The faith of a little child just only believe. Are you believing? Everybody believing? You can be healed if you just believe. Lady sitting there with that dress, dress on, you kind of have a, he was uh, just really thinking then, God, are you going to cut me tonight? That's the truth, isn't it? Not reading your mind, but that's exactly what you said. That's right. Because you want to get over arthritis, don't you? And you also have bursitis, don't you? That's right. All right, now you can go get it over if you just. Your faith touches the Lord Jesus, amen. Oh, people, how can you turn him down? How can you say that he's not alive tonight? Why isn't he alive? Here he is doing the same thing he did when he was here on earth. Just believe him. That's all you have to do. See those people out there without prayer cards or without anything at all. No way to get up here on the platform. They get their faith away from here, down here. And when you do that, it touches it. Now, every spirit in here, I'm feeling it. That's exactly right. And if God wanted to, you couldn't hide your life if you had to. See, all right, now, where? How do you do, sir? You believe me to be God's servant? The reason I say that, sir, is not for our um a poor representative of his but with what little i can 
and with all my heart. I just love him with all my heart and all my soul. I love him. And I suppose, my brother, that you and I are strangers to each other, perhaps. We have never seen one another in our lives. You have seen me, but I don't know you. You just seen me probably by the being in the meetings and things like that. Yes, sir. Well, then, the only way that God would know, that I would know anything about you, or what you're here for, would be through God. Is that right? Now, if he'd show, just show me what was wrong with you, the vision that makes me weak, you see, because I just, if he'd show me what was wrong with you, well, that would be enough for you. You'd blame it then, wouldn't you? With all of your heart. If you possibly can, be just as relevant. Now, my brother, cause there's a spirit all around everywhere. Your brother, myself, is in a different world now, but you're moving away from me, and I see you suffering with a heart trouble. It's caused by a nervous condition. That causes a heart trouble is a nervous condition. That is right. You got a wife that's sick too, has a colon trouble, like some kind of trouble. You got her, I see a daughter. You got a daughter that has spastic or something you have, and you got another daughter that suffers a nervous trouble. She's uh, something around school, isn't she a teacher or something around school? That's right, school teacher. Those things are true, sir. Now, that wasn't me talking. That was my voice, but it was him talking. Now, whatever he told you is the truth. For he was the same one said here, if they lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. You believe that? Then come near. Almighty God, author of life, give her every good gift, send a blessing upon the man, and give to him father the desire of his heart. I ask this in Jesus' name, the Son of God, Amen. God bless you, my brother. How do you do, sir? The strangers to each other, I suppose, sir. My talking to the people, it seems like everybody. Let's, uh, I just want to talk to you a minute. I see you got the book. And the picture there. I hope you enjoy them and God blesses you with reading them. We're strangers to one another. I've never seen you in my life, as I know of. We're totally strangers to each other. Then, if there's anything concerning you or what you're here for, God will have to give it to me in some way. If I, by the Spirit of God, will know these things, just exactly like Jesus did when he was here, then you'll have to know it comes from some spiritual resource. Then will you accept it to be from God? God bless you. Will the audience do the same thing? I wish I could just have more strength to go along. But now, just to speak to you a minute. You are suffering with a nervous condition, that's right. You are a wonderful person, though. You got a strong spirit. Vision breaks quickly for you. You are a disabled veteran. You got a wife. You are a married man. She's stocked with nervousness, too. You are from Texas. You are here, some kind of in a business, some kind of a... You're in a filling station business. You're in a filling station. You got a call in your life for the ministry. You feel like you have, and you're trying to accumulate money to go to a school somewhere to learn about something about it. That's true. You believe? Well, then thus saith the Lord, go and receive what you have asked for in Jesus' name. Do you believe that the Lord Jesus healed you while you were sitting there? He was. God bless you. You can go now and be made well. Mother, do you believe Jesus is going to take that arthritis away from you? You're going to get well. Just go and say, thank you, Lord Jesus. Just having headaches, aren't you? Been having all kinds of headaches. God blessed you, sitting next to you there. Having trouble with your ears, aren't you? You believe Jesus is going to make you well? The lady sitting right there has got something wrong with her eyes. Got a tumor on your eyes, haven't you, lady? Put your hands over your eyes and wipe them across that way. Now go and see Jesus Christ, Miss Well. Praise be to God. Have a lady's trouble and also arthritis. You believe Jesus is going to make you? God bless you then. Go and God will make you well. Go rejoicing, happy. Your troubles in your back, isn't it, lady? You want to be well. 
walk out there and stoop down like this and bend your back down and say, Jesus, I accept it, then go. And Jesus Christ will make you well. Let's say, praise the Lord. Question says, praise the Lord. Brother, you want to go eat your supper? Be well again? All right, go. The earth has left you. You can go and be made well now. Come, you believe, lady? You believe with all of your heart? Then you won't have to be operated on. The tumor will leave you, and you can go home. Diabetes is nothing for Jesus Christ to heal. Amen. You believe him. You want to get over the tumor also. God bless you. Then go and be made well in Jesus' name. Have faith in God. Who switched the switch? All right. Stand still. Are you all together? Is this the rest of the line? All right. To you, young lady, have faith now. Believe with all your heart. There's a dark shadow of death hangs over this family. This lady is a caretaker for these. These people are Indians. You come from an Indian school. You have been put out of the school because of TB. They say that the children are all going to die. This is the father. Look at me, sir. This lady here, by working, has contracted TB and is working in her faith. You feel that you got a call for the ministry. You want to preach a gospel. You, the shadows of death over the children. You believe me to be God's prophet. You believe that this shadow can be moved tonight. You can go back to your people with these children and get well and live. Will you go and preach a gospel and believe on the Lord Jesus? Then Almighty God, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, I condemn every demon power. I take the curse off of these people here. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, may every evil spirit depart from this. Hope is failing all oh, from these people. Come out, Satan. I adjure thee in the name of the Lord Jesus.